you treat people matters. And so we were an organization that was not unionized, and we at that time did not want to be unionized. But the nursing team felt like they were not heard, they were not respected, and so they needed another voice. <clears throat> so they started, or attempted to start a union campaign. Again, the CEO came to me and said, Deborah, this team respects you. Can you work with them and find out what's going on? And I did. And we rolled up our sleeves. I spent days and nights with the nursing team. What is it? You know, what do we need to do? How do we need to work on this? How do we need to fix this? I made a commitment to them and I said, I'm not saying that everything that you ask, you're going to get, but I will say that we will respect the fact that you're asking. And we will give you an answer in some kind of way. And so we did. We were not unionized. The nurse executive was asked to leave. And at that point, the CEO actually asked me if I would consider the role permanently. I reminded him again, remember, I'm not a nurse. Okay, so the chief of patient care services is supposed to be a nurse. And he said, we will figure this out. We will hire a nurse to work for you. And, but you will, okay, lead the organization. So the lesson from that is, and there's a book that I, I do a lot of um, mentoring of especially new leaders, and there's a book that I always give them. It's Kuzas and Posner's The Leadership Challenge. And it talks about, you know, the five tenets of leadership, but the last one is encourage the heart, okay? So we can do all of these other things but if we don't take time to encourage the heart of the people who are working with us and for us and accomplishing those goals and making us millions of dollars, then you know we are not going to be successful. So I would say the next lesson from that is just to make sure that we are, when you're at the table, recognizing how you treat people is important. It's gonna go a long way. So, um, when I was promoted, I was um, one of one, so it was me, and seven white men. Seven mature white men. <laughs> mature in age. <laughs> okay. and, and me. And so, when again, when we talk about being the only one at the table, you are always on display in some way, shape, or form, okay? And, and so realizing, and then we were in Hagerstown, Maryland, so there were many things that were not as progressive. I can remember one of our meetings, and we were going to the country club, and I can remember someone saying to me, not too long ago, you would not have been able to be the speaker in this country club. You know, and, and that is a reality. So the things that came along with the position and that came along with the title, people would have had to think, set, you know, again, twice about, well, okay, but it's this person. Uh, so we opened a lot of new doors um, in Hagerstown as I was there. Stephanie brings up a good point, and I'll tell you how we got to that. We had a um, physician recruiter, and one day the physician recruiter came to me and she said, Deborah, um, you know, I've got this candidate and I'm, I'm trying to, you know, seal the deal, and I was wondering if maybe you could, and you know, she was feminine and hawing. And, and then I thought, okay, the candidate is black, <laughs> right? But you know, so but she couldn't you know, quite figure out how to exactly say it and get there, and and so I remember saying to her, "Let me let me help you. I am happy to talk with any physician candidate you have, anyone that you think I could be helpful bring into this organization." with the caveat of, I am gonna tell them the truth, right? So the good, the bad, and the ugly, but it's no point in having people disrupt their lives, their families, and come to a place when we've not been above board with who we are and where we're going. And so I did, I, you know, every candidate that came through, and, and so then she felt more comfortable, Deborah, I've got this candidate, can you talk to them? Can you spend some time with them? And we did, and we created that book club, and so we've had, you know, Dr. Tisdale and Dr. Henderson and Dr. McAfee and Dr. Brown and many others that came afterwards um, and formed that network, that network of support. Um, 
So I would say another lesson for us is sometimes we have to help our white colleagues feel comfortable approaching us, okay? I knew she was struggling and I knew she wanted to do the right thing and say the right thing, but she just didn't know how or the right words to use.